Over the past couple of days, we've been learning about the beginnings of World War I, the four main things that drove the European continent into war. And then we also began to talk about what led us to the point of America's involvement in the war. So what we're going to do today is you will be walking around the room viewing political cartoons and propaganda posters from this particular time period. You will analyze the symbolism, you will pick out the main ideas, and then you will discuss those things with your classmates. Um, the goal of this lesson is for you to not only evaluate political cartoons and propaganda posters, but to tie into the time period, connect it maybe to other time periods, and then finally to create a poster or cartoon of your own. Okay, so what we'll do first is you're going to go ahead and team up and you will go to your political cartoon or propaganda poster station. At that station, you will have two minutes to interpret the cartoon or the poster with your partner. When the two minutes are up, you will then move to the next station. Of course, at each station, you're going to need to write down a statement. You're going to collaborate, ask each other questions, but you're going to need to write down a statement on the colored paper on the poster. At the next station, maybe the second rotation, for example, you're going to go ahead and look at your new source. You're going to read what your peers had to say before you, and you're going to interpret that and then add on to that statement. Maybe add something new, um, etc. So you walk around until you get back to your original cartoon. Once you get back to your original cartoon, you will actually have three minutes at that cartoon to internalize everything that your peers said. But then you also need to be prepared to present the cartoon to the class to include the main idea and if you agree or disagree with the statements that your peers wrote on the poster. Okay, so do you have any questions about the expectations for this activity? You can go ahead and take your pencil and your notes with you. And you can report to your station and I'll tell you when we can begin. Okay, there's another station over here. Okay, so again, you have two minutes at this particular station, and I will tell you when your time is up, you may begin. Okay, your time is up. Does anyone need more time at their station? Okay, you're going to go ahead and rotate in number order. Rotate in number order. Okay, your time begins now. Remember, you're looking at the cartoon, you're also reading the statements written on the poster.
All right, does anyone need more time at their station? A little bit? A little bit? <laughs> Y'all can go ahead and start rotating. <coughs> May your time begins now. especially when we got involved in war, it really jump-started the process of adding an amendment to the Go ahead and rotate to your next station.
warm on our Mm -hmm. Mm -hmm. Mm -hmm. So what do y'all think? Mm -hmm. Mm -hmm. Um, they just started to watch reaction. So, like, they just started to watch It was like a one shooter, and they got them involved in the whole giant gas gun. Could you possibly address? I see that other groups talked about the chain reaction, chain reaction yeah. and alliances. So could you specifically mention the, the two groups that emerged? Yeah. 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 Yes. Okay. So do you see the connection between the previous two cartoons? Okay, so as you finish up your answers on this particular cartoon or poster, and you go to the last one before you get to your original, or you're about to go to your original, okay? I challenge you, once, once you get back to your original cartoon, to make connections between these posters. I've already seen where some groups have done that already, but whenever you are preparing to explain your cartoon and defend your cartoon, I challenge you to try and pick out the symbolism and make connections between your cartoon and another one that you visited. Okay, so when you go back to your original cartoon, I'm actually going to put up three minutes. Because I realize that you need a little bit more time to read what everyone else wrote about your cartoon. You need to decide if you agree or disagree with it. And of course, you want to share the main idea of the poster with everyone. Okay, so go ahead and make the final rotation. I'm going to get three minutes on the clock. And I'll make sure that I visit each one of your groups to confirm your ideas.
Is everyone prepared to present on their cartoon? Yes? I need a thumbs up, a confirmation, yes? You're ready? Ready? Group three, are you ready to present? Go ahead and take these off the wall. And you can come back and sit with your partner. Okay, so we're going to go ahead and start our presentations in number order. So if I could get group one, if you'd like to stand up. And again, the expectation is for you to definitely discuss the main ideas, the symbolism, and you want to pull in the statements that the rest of your classmates uh, included about that particular cartoon. Well, the overall theme was that the U.S. experiences different things that push them to fight in the war. We tried, like, we tried to stay out of it at first, but since there were so many attacks on our, on our ships, we actually <coughs> ran out of patience. Like in the uh, second poster that said the U.S. patients were sinking. So that triggered us to get in, like, into the war. And there was also that coded message that was sent to uh, Mexico that we like, interfered that. That also uh, pushed us to uh, fight in the war. So that's all for all people. Can you put me a picture in the cartoon? Mm -hmm. Woodrow Wilson. What specifically about the paper on the left hand side of the cartoon, what's significant about that? Um, Congress was supposed to meet on the 16th, but since all this stuff happened, they were meeting on the 2nd. Can anyone say what, what exactly was happening besides the message that was sent? What was another big factor that played into America getting involved in the war? What you got, Taylor? The passengers were shooting some, and Americans were doing good. Okay, so who was sinking American ships and British ships? Was it the German? German U-boat. What's a U-boat? A submarine. Very good. Does anyone have any questions for group one? Very good. Okay, group two, you are up. was a boat, a primary boat. It represents all the things that Germany and the social powers did that had led America to run out of patience and join the war. Such, uh, it also led Woodrow Wilson, like in the first cartoon, to move up the Congress state so that we were more faster because they ran out of patience. And it was the last thing that triggered them. So, Going to the war. Very good. So I think that we see the symbolism with the ship, how a lot of these ships are maybe the USS 
insert name of ship, right? But it's ironic that it just says U.S. patients instead of U.S.S. patients. And with the ship sinking, like the group said, America's patients, they don't have very much more because of the German U-boat attack specifically. Very good. Do you have any questions for group two? What you got? Uh, not so much a question, but like, I didn't even notice it at first, but I mean, it's obviously intended to be the German U-boat sinking the ship, but like the submarines in the bottom corner could also like symbolize everything that all the central powers have done to provoke America getting into the war. Absolutely. Very good. All right, great job, Ron. All right, group three. Group three. Talk poster. It's all the countries that were involved in World War One from the start. It shows how, like, one little country started a chain reaction throughout the world. Okay, so we have all these countries right here, and all the men basically have their country name that they represent written on them somehow, and they're all basically dressed to their type of culture. And the size or the height of each of the men represents that country's military strength or power that they have in Europe right now. And so the first guy in the front is Serbia. And so Serbia was basically home of the Slavic people, which were like kind of, kind of a minority group, and they didn't really have their own place to stay. And Russia had pledged that they were going to help the Slavic people in any kind of conflict that they had. So a Serbian... Gravillo Princip had assassinated the heir to the Austria-Hungarian throne, which was Archduke Franz Ferdinand. And so we have Austria right here. He's like, I'm going to punch Serbia because Serbia kind of sparked this little conflict where he had just assassinated their heir. And right behind Austria is Russia defending Serbia. And then Germany behind Russia is defending Austria. And this represents the different kind of allied and central powers that were going on in Europe at the time. So they all kind of are like defending their own allies in response to different conflicts and different threats that other countries are getting. When the Germans declared war in Russia, so did France, and Britain, but Britain's not pictured, as part of the alliance. So this guy in the back, he's just standing there like trying to be a mediator. Like between the two sides, like trying to make peace. Now is the Americans there in the war because they have tried to persuade each side to seek a peaceful solution to the war. So they they just they don't want to get involved. They don't have to. They're just trying to make a connection and resolve the conflict between the two. Yeah, because he's the only character without a name, and his speech bubble is less threatening. Like he's not threatening to hurt anybody or punch anybody who's like, hey guys, please stop the conflict. Yeah. That's very true. Um, I can say that between you guys and other classes that have completed this activity, um, you are the first group to really pay attention to the last person. Even I think I always assume that the last person in the row was part of a specific alliance system, maybe specifically part of the central powers, just because of the, the skipping of the people in the alliance system. So I really like how you pulled, um, via your background knowledge, and like you speculated who you thought that was and what country they represented. You mentioned Great Britain, but I like how you mentioned America and how at first we didn't want to get involved. But there were things that happened, I think that were illustrated in the cartoon that rose, you know, uh, America's you know, tension in America, basically, and it was hard for Americans to stay out any longer. So I really, really like how you, you focused on that last guy, especially the speech bubble part, because the first four or five speech bubbles are threatening. But like you said, the last one, hey, hi, I'm here, let's stop. <laughs> let's not necessarily fight. So you did an excellent job with the symbolism. You pointed out just about everything. Um, do you guys have any questions for group three or anything else you'd like to point out? I want to point out something. Okay. I remember how Woodrow Wilson created the League of Nations.
and he wanted to settle things peacefully, well, it looks like he, like the guy in the back could be the League of Nations, because he's like, oh, I'm trying to be peaceful, but they're still fighting, so it showed how it didn't work out. Ooh. Yes, absolutely. It's really ridiculous, like one country, like one power half the size of the other ones, from one act of one, like, hired killer, from like one more angry group of people started this entire country. Like, that would be I think that a lot of people don't realize that a murder is what started World War I, coupled with the alliance systems that had been established in Europe. Um, you know, murders happen every day, but you don't see, you know, it, it really lead to war. I think it depends on who it is. And in this case, it was someone very significant. So I agree with you. You make an excellent point. Very good. Very good. All right, group four. So our poster shows a, shows a soldier being involved in U.S. trench warfare. Now trench warfare, it was kind of a death sentence. Like these two sides were in these trenches on both sides of the was like a no man's land in the middle, just like mines and barbed wire in mines. And now it's the first message I was supposed to was over the top for you. Over the top was basically a death sentence, like the soldiers were over the top, they had to go run through the minefield, go to that other guy, shoot at them. And at the bottom it says, buy U.S. government bonds, third liberty loan. So, what the poster's asking is for Americans to buy war bonds. I think war bonds is kind of like an investment, sort of, both in the country and in the war. And it's kind of asking Americans, like, okay, if these soldiers are out there and they're fighting, we can just try to improve their conditions, get them some money. But yeah, it's kind of a rough situation because, like, these Americans, they never really, some of them may have asked for the war, but America didn't really want to be involved in it. We, we were dragged into this entire conflict, and yet you don't have a choice but to, like, support the war and, like, try to do it. You do, like, do war bonds, plant victory gardens. All of that, participate in the draft if you're asked to do it. So, and yeah, I was kind of telling like the rest of this poster too. It was like kind of explaining to them how they're in this entire conflict. It's like how um like with Lauren was saying about the movie, like, 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 Wilson, he kind of just wanted to, but after we've been through like a lot of times being provoked, there was just nothing we could do. And the least we can try to do is like kind of unite the country through, through stuff like the flag, through our past accomplishments, and try to um, get people to support America. So that's really tough time. Do any of you have anything to add to that, or do you have any questions? Mm -hmm. I would say it's third liberty. I don't know if this is right, but like, Americans already fought two wars for independence, like the war, Revolutionary War and War of 1812. So like, when the Germans start attacking them, they could be just trying to defend their independence and their strength. Right, we're trying to throw in some patriotic vocabulary. I like that. I like that. Something else I'd like to point out is that this source is different than the others. All of the others were political cartoons. This is the only propaganda poster that you have. So that's something worth noting. Just seeing how these artists, um, you know, pull patriotic activities and, and buzzwords of the war and put it together, compiled it in an image that you know, appeal to Americans and try to get Americans to help in various ways. Very good job. Very good. All right, we have our last group. So, in this political cartoon, it has Uncle Sam standing with the U.S. Capitol in the back, and he's holding tools in one hand that says work and a uh, right on the other hand that says a fight. And he kind of symbolizes the government, and he's holding up the tools and the gun. And you really only have two choices. You can either work and support the war and the people in the war, or you can fight in the war. And everybody has a job, is what he's saying. And him symbolizing the government kind of shows that we all have to be united, whether you're in the war or working to support the people in the war. Everybody has to be united and work together if we're going to be successful. And that's what most of the people said, that he symbolized the government, and everybody has a job, no matter who you are. If we're going to win this, everybody has to help out. Yeah. And the workers, obviously, support the economic side of it, just like the war bonds do, and help raise money and supplies and food for all the soldiers. 
and of course the people fighting on helping everybody stay free to be able to do so. Very good. So do, do we all agree with what Dawson had to say? Mm -hmm. Ryan had to say? Do you have anything else you'd like to add? Very good job, Utah. Okay, so at this point, I'm going to go ahead and give you a handout that sets the expectation for you to create your own propaganda poster. So, in looking at this, you'll see a couple of posters that look familiar, whether they've been displayed around the room or you interacted with them in today's activity. If you go ahead and flip to the back of this handout, you can see um, where these artists, they were trying to appeal to a lot of different people. Okay? Don't forget about the children. Don't forget about the elderly. Don't forget about the families in the war effort. How can they all contribute? So at this time, I would like for you to brainstorm. Maybe you can turn back to your partner that you worked with for the gallery walk. And I want you to brainstorm ideas um, of things that you could include in a propaganda poster to try and get Americans involved in the war effort, but specifically World War I. Okay, so I'm going to give you a minute or so to maybe come up with a couple of topics again, maybe bounce ideas off of your partner. person like things were being rationed and everything so not a lot of people had a lot of food or a lot of money so one way to basically in a way you were helping the war effort by planting your own victory garden so you had your own vegetables that you could eat and you wouldn't have to go and buy any so in our poster we have well it's just a sketch but there's like the american flag in the background to be all patriotic and everything 
and then there's like a silhouette of a little house, and then like the garden, and then there's Uncle Sam and a regular old Joe just planting in the garden, and the slogan is, win the war, plant victory gardens. Very good. Taylor, can you share out what you plan to draw, what you and Kaylee plan to draw? Uh, okay, so it would be a lot of troops, not a lot, but like a couple of troops all carrying like one flag, on top of like normal plan. And when the slogan saying something about how we've been fighting for us, so we should like have a war bond help them mm -hmm. when they want. Very good. Very good. Okay, so the class almost over. I'm gonna go ahead and ask you a couple of questions just to wrap this lesson up. Um Abby, what was your favorite political cartoon and why? Do not feel obligated to pick the one that you started with. Yeah, I like the one that had like the paper people like the name of the cartoon. Okay, so this one? Yeah, it's okay. like all the lines and it's so fun to Okay. <laughs> Alright, Alex, what was your favorite political cartoon and why? Mine was the one where it was a sinking of the ship. Because okay. it showed that after all the Germans are done to us, it's time to get to the world and try to stay out of it. I'm Sandra, even though we tried to stay out. Casey, what was your favorite cartoon? I think my um, favorite one was like the Papi Young poster because it like unites people. Also, wait, can I just like, say like our cartoon was? Okay, yeah, so we just had this whole idea. Like, the it should just be like a crush at the top of the poster, like, what should you buy to support the war? And then ABC. War bonds, war bonds, war bonds, <laughs> answer to everything. <laughs> yes, we, we like to joke that war bonds are the answer to everything, but you know that war costs money, and you have to get the money from somewhere, so there was an incentive for you to let the government use your money, because after that expiration date was up, you got that money back at face value plus interest. So for maybe people who couldn't fight or didn't want to fight, they could contribute in another way. So what's your options? Buy war bonds. <laughs> and grow victory gardens. Very patriotic. Okay, Kaylee, if you had to write a newspaper headline based off of the things that we discussed today, what would it be? Um. And Dawson, I'm coming to you next. So a newspaper headline. I don't know what like, specific words, but I would probably use something about over the top and how they, when they went over the top, it was for the people because they weren't, they were fighting for it. And over the top, what event does that relate to that was happening on the Western Front? Can anyone help her out? Trench warfare. Trench warfare. Yes, yes. Be confident. Trench warfare. So something with over the top fighting for America's troops. Hey Dawson? I would probably be like US entered war, war to change forever or whatever. Because Germany kept on provoking America and then when America was finally about to enter the war, they sent that secret coded message to Mexico to try to distract it because everybody knew that once we would join the war and it was over with. Absolutely. Very good. Hey, last one, Lauren. Oh, Newspaper headline, yes ma'am. Well, I would say something about the U.S. becoming denied for a situation that they didn't even want to be a part of. So maybe they don't want to be involved, but it's still united because as a country they are strong and they have Very good. Hey, thank you for your participation today. You guys did a great job, and I hope that you have a greater understanding of World War I, and especially the role that propaganda can play in influencing the force of the war. Great job.